Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the greetings of peace and blessings be with each and every one of you. Ramadan Kareem, Ramadan Mubarak, Ramadan blessings be with each and every one of you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower his endless bounties on each and every one of us in this blessed season. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, a famous companion of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings upon him, whenever the month of Ramadan would come close or would come into the position of entry, then he would say, Marhaban bi Ramadan, welcome to the month of Ramadan. Mutahiruna dhunub. This is the blessed month which will purify us, which will bring discipline within us, which will bless us with the best of forgiveness from the Almighty. Once again, we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you, regardless of what has happened in the past. This is a great opportunity to connect ourselves with the Almighty and be blessed and forgiven uh, from the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As we know, whenever the month of Ramadan arrives, then it is a season of mercy. We can understand this from the beautiful report where the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings upon him, said, إِذَا جَاءَ رَمَضَانْ فُتِّحَتْ أَبْوَابُ الْجَنَّةِ When the month of Ramadan arrives, then the gates of paradise are opened. وَغُلِّقَتْ أَبْوَابُ النَّارِ And the gates of hellfire are closed. This is a strong indication from amongst many others that we are able to derive from this prophetic report is that the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants all of us to enter into Jannah and Paradise. Allah wants all of us to be protected from all forms of punishment uh, including that of the hellfire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with just that entry into paradise and also protection from all forms of punish punishment, including the hellfire. The month of Ramadan is a very blessed month. Shahrun Azim, it's a month that is magnanimous, that is awesome, that is great. Shahrun Mubarak, it's a blessed month full of barakah and blessings from the Almighty that all of us can access. It's a month of siyam and qiyam. It's a month of fasting. It's a month of standing in additional prayer in the night, as well as multiplied rewards. We do one good deed in any other period of the year. Yes, we get blessings and bounties, but doing that very same deed in this month of Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala multiplies many folds for you and I, uh, in this month of uh, the blessed month of Ramadan. So the multiplied rewards, Shahru Sabr, it is also a month of patience, endurance, self-discipline, training, and learning how to curb our bad habits and engage in doing all the good that we can. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Shahru Al-Muwasat, it's a month of uh, compassion, it's a month of care, it's a month of, of, of having a, a bigger heart for those who may suffer. And that's why uh, we see the increased charity from many of you in the blessed month of Ramadan. So an amazing month has come. Uh, we uh, are to take full advantage of this blessed month and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us that ability to value every moment in this blessed month of Ramadan that is upon us and that has arrived and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once again give us the facilitation to engage in all forms of good. Now what are some of our responsibilities in this month? Obviously as Muslims, as believers, uh, we know that there are five pillars of Islam. And Sawmu Ramadan, to fast in the month of Ramadan, is one of the mandatory activities and pillars that we are to engage in. For those of us that are healthy, for those of us that have the strength and the ability, we have no option but to surrender to this command. And as the Almighty says in the Holy Quran, فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرَ فَلْيَصُمْ Those who are present in the month of Ramadan, they should certainly fast. They should engage in this 
uh, act of loyalty and love to the Almighty, where for a few hours of the day, uh, in daylight, meaning from dawn to dusk, we abstain from food, we abstain from a drink, and we abstain from sexual temptations, Again, to discipline ourselves in loyalty to the Almighty and dedication to the, uh, to the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it is, our, it is our duty, it is our responsibility as believers to fast in the month of Ramadan. As we know, those who are terminally ill, they have a chronic illness, their doctors have uh, assessed their situation and told them that they're unable to fast, it's not healthy for them, it will further aggravate their sicknesses, then the Qur'an makes it very clear. فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِّنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ That uh, for those who are sick during the month of Ramadan, for those who are in journey in the month of Ramadan, then they are to make up for those days later on. Meaning that if a person has a temporary sickness, a temporary illness, they're in journey momentarily or temporarily, they're not at home, they're in some journey, whether it's business related or otherwise, then they are exempt from fasting in the month of Ramadan. However, once after their illness, they regain their health, they regain their energy, then فَعِدَّةٌ مِّنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرَ The Almighty says they will make up for the days that they have missed. Once the journey is over, once the travel is over, they will now uh, engage in making up uh, for the missed fast. However, terminally ill, a person who is terminally ill, a person who is terminally uh, uh, sick, and they're unable to regain their health, then the duty upon them is to give the fidya, to give, uh, to give an amount of wealth in ransom. And, and the Prophet ﷺ, during his time, it was some dates, it was some, some barley, some, some wheat. The Prophet ﷺ, uh, he estimated uh, if we can uh, put it into today's uh, uh, weight of grains, etc. It's about two and a half, three kilograms of dates, three kilograms of barley or wheat. And it's, or its value we give for each day that we have missed uh, of the fasting. Uh, so in Canada here, it's approximately $10 or so. Uh, and this is minimum. We can always give, give more because this, this reaches the poor. And uh, surprisingly, many people don't realize this. Those, those who are terminally ill, they feel very bad. Uh, I, I know many people in my community here uh, in Scarborough, in Toronto, Canada, where... Um, uh, elderly are unable to fast, they're giving fidya, but they feel very bad in their heart that I'm unable to fast and I won't get the blessings of the month of Ramadan. In reality, the, 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 the ruling is that those who are unable to fast, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them the rewards of fasting by doing their part. By giving that fidya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them the reward as if they were fasting. And we see this in a hadith of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings upon him, that those who are consistent, those who are perpetual in any good activity, if for some reason or the other they're unable to continue that activity, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses them with the rewards even when they're unable to do it. So a person during their youth, during their adulthood, they fasted, they didn't miss Ramadans, they didn't miss the fasting, but now they're terminally ill, they're, they're elderly, they have chronic illnesses, they can't fast. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala writes for them the same rewards as if they were fasting. Again, this is from the mercy of the Almighty. So the month of Ramadan has come upon us. It's a very virtuous month. It's a very blessed month. For those of us who are able, for those of us who are healthy, we can fast. Then we should not ever abandon the fasting and fulfill this obligation and earn all the blessings and the mercy of the Almighty. And those of us who are in journey or in a sickness, then momentarily we can be exempted for the fasting, but after the journey is over, after the sickness is over, then we will make up for the days that we have missed in the month of Ramadan. And for those who are chronically ill, for those who are terminally ill, and there's no possibility, there's no hope for them to regain their health, then they will give the fidya every single day, at least a minimum of $10 for each day of fasting. And inshallah, they will be blessed with the rewards and, and, and the blessings as well. So, so many virtues of fasting. I'll just mention a couple rewards here. One companion came to the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings upon him, and he asked, 
uh, you know, give me an advice of a certain activity I can do and I can attain so much rewards and I can attain so many blessings. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said, عَلَيْكَ بِالصُّمْ فَإِنَّهُ لَا مِثْلَ له. That fast, for indeed there is no activity such as fasting. Subhanallah, if we are to look deeper into the activity of fasting, there's so many benefits, there's so many virtues, and there's so many, uh, uh, you know, wisdoms within this activity of fasting. Number one is when we're fasting, we're doing a devotional act that connects us with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That we're not eating, we're not drinking, we're staying away from marital relations only for the sake of Allah. So this is an act of love. When we love someone, we're ready to sacrifice for them. When we're attached with someone, we're ready to put ourselves on the line for them because we are prioritizing our love for them. So this is our love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why there's so many benefits from a spiritual aspect uh, in regards to fasting. Now, there's so many physical benefits as well. Many of us, we find it difficult to diet or to watch our intake of food and drink. So the month of Ramadan and fasting, it helps us get into that groove, physical benefits. There's health benefits in fasting. In fact, uh, many a times I share this study that was done and it was reported on the BBC uh, where, uh, you, know, you know, health benefits were being discussed. And this non-Muslim expert uh, he said, the best way is the, uh, the prophetic way. The Prophet of Islam, what he did is that he ate normally during the week, but then two days of the week, Mondays and Thursdays, he reduced his intake. And it was very minimal. And that balanced out the health benefits of the physical body. So when we fast... Uh, there are so many benefits for, uh, in a physical sense as well. Uh, we can learn to, uh, uh, you know, uh, diet through the month of Ramadan. And we can watch how we intake food and drink and then continue that even after the month of Ramadan. Uh, again, so many other benefits. We learn time management. When it's time for uh, fasting, we look at the timetables. Many of us have downloaded apps on our phones to, to check the time of suhoor, uh, to check the time of the pre-dawn meal. When does it end? When does fajr time set in? We, we look at iftar. We watch every moment and every second and we say, okay, now's the time. Adhan is being called. Let's recite our dua and let's open our fast and have iftar. So what is this teaching us? This is teaching us time management. Just like we are so precise with the minute and the second, when we look at the rest of our lives, we should be punctual with our duties at work. We should not leave work early. We should not come late to work. We should hand in our assignment as students on time, not procrastinate and delay. Fasting is, t is, is teaching us all of this. So there's a lot of benefits from fasting that we can uh, attain. And again, uh, we need to access these benefits by engaging in this beautiful act of fasting. The Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings upon him, has declared in a hadith al-Qudsi in reference to uh, the rewards of fasting. What does he say? He says that the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that ana ajzi bih, that when it comes to fasting, I am its reward. I am the reward for fasting. And fasting is a, such a sincere activity that we cannot show and we cannot do ostentation. We cannot show off when it comes to fasting. When it comes to any other deed, any other act of, uh, of goodness, many a times it is easily displayed. If I'm reciting the, the Quran, someone can easily see me and it can lead to showing off. Uh, when I give a charity and put donations or help someone, then... Uh, the, the person I am donating to or the organization that is a vehicle for my donation to be sent to whatever cause it is, they are able to see my dedication and my charitable act and my good deed. But when it comes to fasting, it's only between the individual and the Almighty. No one knows, no one can determine uh, whether a person is fasting or not. And that shows the sincerity of this act and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَأَنَا 
ajzibih that I will certainly uh, give the rewards and the benefits of fasting and I am the rewards. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I am the rewards. So when it comes to fasting, we need to internalize the fasting. We need to understand the deeper meaning of fasting. And that's why uh, the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings upon him, highlights this, this attention of ours towards the deeper meaning of fasting. What does he say? He says, كَمْ مِنْ صَائِمٍ لَيْسَ لَهُ مِنْ صِيَامِهِ إِلَّا الْجُوعِ That there are many who fast, but they attain nothing from their fasting apart from staying hungry and staying thirsty. Meaning that the Prophet is, is, is highlighting for us that there's a deeper meaning to fasting. Fasting doesn't only mean we stay away from food and drink because there's many people who do this. Yes, there's some benefit in it, there's some physical benefits, etc. But the Prophet وسلم, our beloved guide and mentor, he's telling us to take the fasting to a deeper meaning. And Imam Ghazali, rahimahullah, the great scholar, he mentions this in his book, Ihya Al-Ulum al deen that uh, when, we, when, we, when we fast, there are three levels of fasting. The basic level of fasting is simply to stay away from food, drink, and marital relations. But there's a deeper meaning. And the deeper meaning is just like we're able to control our food intake and our uh, drink intake, we should also uh, have control on our tongues. We should have control on our ears. We should have control on our eyesight. We should have control on the rest of the limbs of our bodies. Meaning that we should control where we are looking. We should only look at what is good. We should not look at what is evil, what is harmful, what is detestable, what is considered a sin. We should not listen to things that will destroy our mental health. We should not listen to things that will destroy our spirituality. We should not be listening to harmful uh, entertainment or anything that would spoil our connection with the Almighty and our doing good. We should be careful on how we use our, our limbs, our hands, our feet, our private organs. We need to have discipline and we need to understand that there are steps we need to take in order to fast in a true sense, the true essence of fasting. So fasting is not only staying away from food and drink, it's about controlling our entire life. As someone said it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed every believer during the month of Ramadan with a free training course. And that training course will make us so well uh, that by the end of Ramadan, if we have observed Ramadan fruitfully, then by the end of Ramadan, we are a changed person. We are a transformed individual. We're better at time management. We're better in our dieting. We're better in how we, how we control our limbs, our eyes, our ears, etc. And we are a positive person, free from sin and evil, ready to take the rest of the year with all positivity and all goodness and mercy from the Almighty. So again, uh, fasting, we have to ensure that we are taking our fasting to a higher level. Obviously, every one of us, we are at different levels, uh, but start and work towards it and we will see ourselves improving and we will see ourselves uh, increasing in all aspects. Another point that I'd like to highlight here in regards to the month of Ramadan, the blessed month of Ramadan, is that it's for 30 days. And as we know, we say it all the time, time flies. Oh wow, it's already been so many minutes, it's already been so many hours. Sometimes we're anticipating something, oh the summer is coming, oh uh, you know the holidays are coming, or you know what, oh so and so's wedding is coming, uh, I'm, I'm waiting for that job interview. We're anticipating something and we're looking forward to it. And then sooner or later we realize it's already here. Tomorrow is that interview. Tomorrow is that wedding. Tomorrow's the summer holiday starts. Tomorrow this, this commences. So sooner or later the month of Ramadan will arrive and the, the month of Ramadan will conclude. And time flies. But guess what? We are the pilots for the time. 
the way we use our time, it determines how fruitful we are within that moment. So it's not about the day or the week or the month or the year. It's about what we are doing in the day, in the, in the week, in the month or in the year. So the month of Ramadan has come. Let us not let it slip away. What we need to do is two things. Number one is we need to write down and visualize some goals. And uh, some of the goals I hear often from many of you, mashallah, is I want to complete at least one recitation of the Qur'an. I want to take out my zakat and discharge zakat and help many masajid and organizations and the poor and the needy and orphanages and many good causes. So I want to allocate some of my charity in the month of Ramadan for these organizations and these great causes. Another goal that I often hear is I want to become punctual with my salah and my prayers. Uh, another goal I often hear is I want to learn more about the religion. I want to more learn better, be better in, 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 in practicing and knowing about the, the, the deen of Islam, the religion of Islam. Many of us have goals that I want to be a better human being. I want to uh, so-and-so from my family or relatives. I haven't had some good moments with them. We haven't been on talking terms. I want to get rid of that and I want to forgive. I want to empty my heart of any um, harboring of any ill feelings and I want to mend the relationships. I want to be better with my parents. I want to be better with my siblings, with my spouse, uh, with the community in general and forgive and forget. These are all great goal goals that we, we, we can have. So write down every one of these goals. Uh, you know, we can write down with a pen and paper in the traditional way. You can use your smart gadgets and uh, note them down and then have a plan. We know the famous statement. We know the famous saying, if we fail to plan, we plan to fail. Uh, Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, he would uh, plan and schedule himself to be in the presence of the Prophet sallallahu he would retain many of the statements from the Sahaba and he had a plan to incorporate and to memorize and to commit to memory so many of the things that the Sahaba, the elder companions learned from the Prophet Sallallahu And he worked towards establishing that. And this is an example that uh, if we have goals in mind, what's the plan? You want to complete the recitation of the Qur'an? How much are you going to recite every day so that by the end of Ramadan we have recited the entire Holy, uh, Holy Qur'an? I want to be punctual with my prayer. How am I going to do that? I'm going to put a reminder on my phone. I'm going to ask others in my household to also remind me or we'll pray together or I'll attend the masjid. So uh, again, mashallah, these are great goals that we can have. Write down all your goals and have a plan, schedule yourselves, and you will see yourselves benefiting from the blessed month of Ramadan. Another aspect that we need to highlight in the month of Ramadan is that we need to remove distractions. We need to remove anything that would be considered uh, being a hindrance to our progress in the month of Ramadan. So, uh, you know, the other day someone sent me a post and it's a beautiful post about the month of Ramadan that get rid of the thieves of Ramadan. There are certain things that will snatch away our commitment to the month of Ramadan and we'll be distracted. Sometimes we spend hours on social media. Sometimes we spend hours on watching entertainment on YouTube, on Netflix, on all of these uh, portals and, and formats that are available to us. Uh, we can reduce that or we can minimize and, and also eliminate that for the month of Ramadan. So we're not only fasting within our mind and body and spirits, we're also fasting away from all these distractions that often turn us away from a bigger objective. Like someone said, uh, we're living in an age of distraction. There's so many things that are trying to uh, get our attention and turn us away from a better objective or progressing in some way or the other in our lives. So get rid of those distractions. Sit down before the month of Ramadan. Uh, you know, we have a day or two before the month of Ramadan. Sit down and reflect. What are some of the distractions? What are some of the things that I don't, I don't need? We see the pious predecessors. When the month of Ramadan would arrive, the scholars of hadith, the scholars of taf tafsir, etc., they were already doing good. But what they did is they minimized some of their activities. And they said, I need more time to recite Qur'an. I need more time to dedicate for worship. I need more time to 
turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in dua and in prayer. So we need to also do this. Get rid of all the distractions, the thieves that will snatch away our attention and our focus on the month of Ramadan. And by doing so again, uh, we will be able to maximize the benefits of Ramadan. Beautiful narration where the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings upon him, he said, Ameen, as he stepped down from the mimbar and the pulpit. And uh, the companions, they didn't hear anyone supplicate. So why was the Prophet ﷺ saying Ameen? And this is a famous narration I'm sure some of you have heard. But the Prophet ﷺ was actually saying Ameen to the dua that the angel Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, the angel Gabriel was articulating. And what was that dua and what was that supplication? The Prophet Muhammad ﷺ was saying Ameen to the dua of the angel wherein the angel said, Woe be to the one, destruction, destruction be to the one who experiences the month of Ramadan, who is present and alive in the month of Ramadan, yet by the end of Ramadan, they are not forgiven. Imagine the gates of paradise are open, the gates of the hellfire are shut. Allah promises that whoever benefits and values the month of Ramadan, He promises His forgiveness. مَنْ صَامَ رَمَضَانَ وَانْقَامَ رَمَضَانَ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِ The Prophet ﷺ says that whoever fasts in the month of Ramadan, whoever does qiyam and stands in prayer in the month of Ramadan, they will be forgiven. So, woe be to the one. The angel Gabriel is supplicating and saying, woe be to the one who is alive in the month of Ramadan, yet by the end of the month of Ramadan, they are not forgiven. So, who is, can be this deprived person when it's a season of mercy, it's a season of blessings, it's a season of forgiveness. It's the one who just considers Ramadan as another month. They just consider uh, the days of Ramadan as another day. Let us not do this. Let us embrace the month of Ramadan. Let us welcome the month of Ramadan. Let us have a positive outlook on the month of Ramadan. Let us be dedicated to the month of Ramadan. Let us establish goals and schedule ourselves and make the efforts and do all the good that we can. Increase in our worship. Increase in our supplications. Increase in our dua. Increase in our ibadat, in our acts of worship and see ourselves benefiting and by the end of the month of Ramadan will be a transformed individual. So a blessed month has come. A blessed season has come. Let us maximize it with all the good that we can. And in conclusion, uh, you know, I remind myself and one and all that we're living in turbulent times. Uh, we have for the last two years uh, been in a very difficult pandemic. And in some regions of the world, uh, the restrictions have eased, the lockdowns are no longer in place, and in some regions of the world, we're seeing another rise of the virus. So these are moments Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us, the month of Ramadan, to turn to Him in prayer, in dedication, that, O oh Allah, do not punish us for our negligence. O oh Allah, send Your mercy. Cure the entire humanity, the entire world of COVID-19, of the pandemic and challenging circumstances. We're seeing war. We're seeing racism. We're seeing hatred. We're seeing Islamophobia. We're seeing, uh, uh, you know, all kinds of inhumane activities. But, oh Allah, let this not be the case. Uh, let, uh, oh Allah, let all of us understand that we have to be decent human beings where we respect one another, where we are peaceful and coexist with one another, and we don't hurt one another. Rather, we all become sources of mercy. In fact, in one of the narrations uh, that talks about, highlights the month of Ramadan, uh, the, 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 the Prophet ﷺ indicates that there is a declaration that is made uh, in the month of Ramadan. There is a declaration that is made. Ya baghi al khair. O oh, the one who is seeking good, continue and make your efforts and do all the good that you can. Kun miftah al khair, be keys to good. Uh, and then, and then in this narration, the Prophet ﷺ indicates and he says, "Ya baghi al shar, aqsir." And O oh, the one who is involved in bad, uh, they have bad attachments of bad habits, or they're engaged in evil or harmful activities. This is the time to 
pause. This is the time to abandon. This is the time to uh, reflect and let go of that and change the course of your life, change the course of what you are doing and become a positive individual, become one of, of solutions, become one of peace. So in these turbulent times, make some resolutions and be sources of mercy, be sources of supporting those who are doing good and, and be a source of good yourself and be be, be one who, who is the, the end, who closes the door, who locks everything that is related to evil, harm and bad. And, uh, and that way we become agents of mercy and, and, and sources of goodness. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ And this is, how the, uh, this is what objective the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings upon him, has been sent for. So once again, the month of Ramadan has come for our own benefit. We are very blessed. The Prophet Wasallam he taught us a supplication, actually a few supplications, one is, uh, Allahumma barik lana fi Rajab wa Sha'ban. Oh Allah, bless us in the months of Rajab and Sha'ban and allow us to experience the month of Ramadan. Wa ballighna Ramadan. Allow us to live to see the month of Ramadan. So the anticipation of Ramadan, the Prophet ﷺ taught us in this supplication and he made dua, he supplicated to be present. So here we are about to be present in the month of Ramadan. Let us value it with our intentions, with our actions, and our loyalty and our obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the other narration, Allahumma sallimni li Ramadan wa sallimhu li. That, uh, O oh Allah, allow me to be safe and well-being to uh, reach Ramadan and let Ramadan be a positive source of well-being and goodness for me. So we make these supplications and we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you uh, listeners and watch, uh, those who are watching, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you in this blessed month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alleviate and remove all the difficulties related to the pandemic, related to war, related to all kinds of chaotic situations across the world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala establish peace. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to value every moment of this blessed month. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to increase in our ibadat. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our fasting. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our prayers and our supplications. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala relieve us of our problems and our difficulties. And may Allah spread love, mercy and kindness amongst all human beings. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the best of this world as well as that of the hereafter. We'll see you next time. Jazakumullahu khairan. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته. أطع الله والله يا الله والله أطع الله يا الله أطع الله والله يا الله والله أطع الله يا الله.